All right, so at this point, we've, we've written down the definition of the differential, right? And the differential really is just you take the derivative, you tack on this dx, which we, we haven't quite made clear what's going on with the, the dy, the dx. I mean, don't we usually see that as dy over, actually, some people kind of like this, right? Um, dy over dx, the Leibniz notation for the derivative, right? We're saying dy over dx is f prime of x. Sure, fine. Um, suddenly it looks like we're treating this as a fraction that we can move around. And of course, we know that it, it really isn't. Um, so we're, you know, there, there are these kind of notational coincidences that, that make some people happy. Let's put it that way. Um, make some other people annoyed, probably. But let's get to this question, which has come up. Over here, I have f prime of c times delta x. Over here, I have f prime of c times dx. Um, why can I use either symbol there for x, right? Delta x, dx, I'm using a delta, a d, it means the same thing. Um, but obviously, delta y and, and dy, these are very different, right? Because delta y is just the difference between the two function values. dy is, is this result that we get here from the derivative. And yes, they will be close together in value if d delta x is not too big, um, but they're not the same, okay? So what's, uh, what's going on? Well, of course, what all we have to realize here is that if our function is already linear, right? So if f of x is, let's say, mx plus b, right? And I do, and I do y equals f of x. Notice what's going to happen. Um, delta y is going to be f at c plus delta x minus f at c. So that's going to be m times c plus delta x plus b, subtract m times c plus b. And if you clean all this up, what you're left with is m times delta x. On the other hand, dy, dy is going to be, well, what's f prime? f prime is just m, right? It's f prime at c times delta x, which is just m times delta x. Oh, which is the same thing as delta y, right? So in this case, they come out to be the same, right? And, and, speak, and this makes sense, right? Because their function was linear to begin with. The linear approximation of a linear function is the function that you started with, okay? Um, so delta y and, and dy, they're equal for linear functions, right? They only start to diverge once your function is nonlinear, right? Once there are, there are other parts of your function other than just the linear bit, uh, then you start to see differences. So what is, when, why is dx the same as delta x? Well, when we mean delta x, right, we kind of, you know, this is a shorthand notation for, you know, this is basically the same thing. It sort of stands for if you like, if you want, maybe delta y, where our function is just x, right? Um, this is just basic identity function, y equals x, right? Um, this is our f of x. Um, that's one way to think about it, right? Um, so if your function is just x, and you go through this whole process of computing a differential, um, then dx and delta x do come out to be exactly the same thing, right? Um, so x is already kind of, you know, the function just y equals x, already a linear function. So yeah, it makes sense. Delta x, dx, same thing. Delta y, dy in general, different because of course most of the functions we deal with are not linear functions.